I was trying so hard to think of an intro for this review, but I just couldn't. Hey Indie Warriors, have you checked out I Dream of Indie Games Patreon yet? No? Well that's puzzling. Gain awesome perks and support independent content at patreon.com slash I Dream of Indie Games. So then, the Trine series, it goes all the way back to 2009, believe it or not, and I remember playing the original on my PlayStation 3. In fact, for the purpose of this review, I went back and looked at the original Trine, as well as some of the sequels, and honestly, even today, they're really beautiful looking, well-designed games, they hold up quite well. Well, Trine 5 does not attempt to rewrite the book, but its intelligently designed puzzles and unique characters that can be switched between on the fly remain a compelling formula for fun. In Trine 5, players will be in control of Zoya the Thief, Pontius the Knight, and Amadeus the Wizard as they battle against the Clockwork Army. Lady Sunshine Crownsdale invites our heroes to a celebration of the Heroes of Trine, a deceivingly pleasant gesture. Of course, her intentions are not good setting off the greater adventure. Come on, you saw it coming. The storytelling in Trine 5 is surprisingly decent, however, and does a good job of introducing players to the mechanics and providing them with a reason to push through even the most challenging of puzzles. The real-time cutscenes play out mostly between every level, and are well acted and directed. No, Trine 5 will still not win any narrative awards, but it is a well-paced fairy tale of a game. Trine 5 introduces a revamped combat engine and the ability to be played in four-player co-op this time, but ultimately, this is still the Trine you've come to know and love over the years. Sticking with the series 2.5D perspective, outside of Trine 3 of course, this is a series that in my opinion is still best enjoyed in co-op with friends, and preferably ones that communicate well with one another. Players do have some options of how they want to tailor their experience. There is the unlimited mode, which is two to four players and allows for any combination of heroes at any time throughout the campaign. So as an example, all four players could theoretically be Pontius the Knight or something like that. And then we have the classic mode, which is the Trine of Yore, only allowing up to three players and one of each character at a time. There are also difficulties to choose between including easy, normal, hard, and even a custom mode to suit your needs. You can customize your characters to a degree by selecting a few different colors and outfits, and then off you go on your grand puzzle solving platforming adventure. I should stress puzzle solving because if you haven't played a Trine game before, you're going to have to use your noggin quite often. The wizard has the ability to levitate objects, creating blocks and bridges to help you progress forward. The thief is an archer who can create ropes to swing across gaps and shoot switches, and the knight is your standard big brute who can butt slam like no other and does fairly well in combat and blocking projectiles with his mighty shield. The cool thing about all three characters is that as you progress through the game, they gain enhancements to their abilities through a skill tree and by completing levels. As an example, the thief can eventually ricochet her arrows off of any flat surface, and the wizard can fling enemies all over the screen with his telekinetic abilities. This keeps the experience feeling fresh throughout, and most of the new abilities were really enjoyable to use. Though I will say, and I can't stress this enough, try and find like its predecessors, really feels like it was built as a multiplayer experience. Stumbling into solutions in unorthodox ways with my co-op partner were some of the most rewarding and comical moments of the game. That said, the game does a great job of tailoring the puzzles to however many players are on the screen, and dropping in and out of gameplay is extremely well implemented. Of course, playing online is also an option if you don't have a local partner. Trine 5 does feature a world map of sorts that resembles a storybook illustration, and it's broken up into five acts all consisting of a variety of levels. Each level is quite lengthy, so players can expect a substantial amount of gameplay hours with replayability through collecting skill points to completion or ramping up the difficulty itself. Of course, this will vary depending on your puzzle solving skills and how long you can convince your friends to play with you, but if going it alone, you can expect a much steeper challenge, as you'll really need to think outside the box while toggling between all the different characters. Regardless of how you approach things, Trine Five's puzzles are extremely clever and rewarding. The game will bombard you with room after room of puzzle to be solved, though it does attempt to break things up with combat from time to time. While not exceptional, I did find battling foes to be more entertaining in this version of Trine than previous iterations. The developers have refined the combat engine quite a bit, making for an overall smoother experience. I loved smashing foes with the wizard in particular. It's still not an amazing combat-focused game or anything like that, but it's pretty good for a Trine game. I would also say that allowing 
allowing for multiples of the same character in play at once creates some unique and creative options for puzzle solutions. However, with two or three wizards on the screen, it can sometimes be difficult to distinguish between players. I know they're labeled, but sometimes when you're focused on timing or trying to line up your shot, you lose focus on the other aspects of the game. Some sections do force you to play as one of the particular protagonists due to whatever is unfolding in the story at that time. While this is something that could easily become annoying, I actually really enjoyed these segments for allowing me time to become acquainted with each character's strengths and shortcomings. It was fun to have to think outside the box with a limited skill set in order to progress. If you're stuck for too long on a particular section, the game will provide you some hints in the form of narration. It's simple, but effective enough in pointing you towards the solution and pushing the game forward. Visually now, Trine 5 stays true to the Trine franchise. Honestly, when looking back on the old games, I was surprised how well their style and graphics held up even today. This entry in the franchise is not much of a departure, but it is bright, well detailed, and features a variety of lush environments. The backgrounds in particular have gorgeous attention to detail, from the tiny mushrooms growing, the swaying grass, to the occasional fox spotted in the distance. The water and the lighting are fantastic, particularly if you can max the game out on the right rig. All of this combines to create a layered and immersive fairy tale setting. The Clockwork Knights also have a cool design to them, reminding me a bit of TikTok from Return to Oz. An obscure reference, but a fantastic movie. Well, depending who you ask. Trine 5 certainly doesn't have the look of a AAA title, with some low-res textures to be found, but it is still quite striking in its overall design and presentation. As for how the game performed on the PC, it was pretty flawless at the native 4K resolution maxed out using a 4070 graphics card. At the worst, our frame rate dropped into the mid-50s only when we maxed out the anti-aliasing and when there were a lot of visual effects on screen at once. When I dropped the anti-aliasing to around medium with everything else maxed out, I was getting around 80 to sometimes 90 FPS on that 4070. Overall, these dips were pretty few and far between, even completely maxed out. If players opt for a lower resolution, such as 1440p or 1080p, Trine 5 should run without much issue at high settings. But of course, there are plenty of options to tweak things for optimal performance, with the recommended graphics card being a GTX 1060, which launched back in 2016, running Trine 5 shouldn't be that much of a problem for most PC players. I did test the game out on Steam Deck just for kicks, and to my surprise, you can get a solid 30 FPS out of the powerful handheld. The deck version certainly doesn't have the same punch, but it serves the purpose if you're looking to enjoy the single player mode on the go. It works pretty well, but as one might expect, there are sacrifices in visuals and performance. Load times were also a bit longer, but overall, Pretty impressive stuff for a handheld running a brand new 2023 release. And as for the soundtrack, it's more or less what you would expect out of the Trine franchise. Fun and whimsical. The songs are filled with fantasy and adventure, and the sound effects that accompany the compositions are quite lovely. The sounds of running water, birds chirping, and clanging metal are very effective, making this all in all a lovely visual and audio experience. So as I stated towards the beginning of this review, Trine 5 doesn't reinvent the series entirely, but wisely sticks to what it does best while offering some nice refinements. The puzzles are as strong as ever, with intuitive mechanics and a fun skill upgrade system. The co-op is where this one really shines, as the moments where you solve a puzzle, perhaps not in the way that it was intended to be solved, are really rewarding. Combat is halfway decent this go around, and all in all, fans of the series shouldn't have that much to complain about. It's good to have Trine back again. Trine was a person, and she chose us as successors to her powers. How do we know these are not lies spun by a master thief and her accomplices? Ma'am, there's been a mistake here. We're the heroes of Trine. We do only good things. <laughs> <laughs>